Um, well, are you guys ready to worship? Yeah. My name is Emma Back. I am the worship pastor here at RSM, and we are so excited to be here with you guys tonight. So, if you would, let's just go ahead and stand to our feet. If you guys would come forward, we've got this whole space up here to just go after Jesus. We really want to have an encounter with you tonight. We don't want you guys to just watch us and see what Arson does, but we want to just be here with you tonight. We want to create an atmosphere for all of us to just encounter Jesus together. So come on, let's fill this space up. You guys can come down here. Oh, Holy Spirit, we just invite you into this place. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Come on, let's go ahead and lift our voices straight to him. Jesus, thank you that we get to come together to worship you. Oh, we don't take it lightly. Oh, we are excited that we get to worship you again tonight. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Come on, let's just go after him tonight.
second verse again about how we can't deny what I've seen. And I just declare that all doubt in this room has to leave right now in the name of Jesus. another one and get up get up get up get up out of that grave so when we go back into this I, I think we just need to dance like we know for lost loved ones and that that they're coming home I feel like we just need to go crazy in here because we know lost ones lost loved ones are coming home get up get up get up get up out of that grave hell lost another one you won't have another one of my friends you won't have my family members you won't have my family members. You won't have my friends. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. 
There's something about just pure worship. We're not asking him to set us on fire. We're not asking for an outpouring of his spirit. All of that is awesome. But all of that is centered in the person of Jesus Christ. That we would gaze at him tonight in a fresh and new way. Lord Jesus, we pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of God. We pray the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened. We want to see you in your glorified state. We want to see you seated at the right hand of the Father. We want to see the eyes that burn with blazing fire, the head and hair like wool. We want to gaze at you, Jesus. I want us to sing this one more time, but before we do, I want you just to keep your eyes closed. I'm, I'm amazed that John the disciple of Jesus, the disciple whom Jesus loves. Here he is at the Last Supper and he's laying his head on Jesus' chest. He's close to the Master. He's close to the Messiah. He has this intimacy, this relationship where even the secrets of his heart are being revealed to John. But we fast forward to the Isle of Patmos where the Bible says that I was in the Spirit of the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And he begins to have this encounter with Jesus. But this is not just any encounter. This is the encounter with the glorified Christ. Not the Son of Man, the Son of God that was in a flesh and bone body. But now God in all of his glory and the Bible says that he fell at his feet as dead. Come on, Jesus, you might be acquainted with him tonight. You might have an intimate walk with him up to this point. But friend, I want to tell you, there's an encounter that will put you on your face. There's an encounter that when your eyes are open, you see Jesus like you've never seen him before. You've laid your head on his chest in the past, but you're going to see eyes that burn with blazing fire. Come on, I want every hand raised. Come on, let's lift up the Son of God, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. Come on, sing it again. Jesus. Jesus Christ, we You are mighty. You are glorious. You are beautiful. There is no one like you, Lord. There is no one like you, Lord. Come on, worship him. Come on, just as they play, lift your hands. You begin to ask him, I want to see you, Jesus. I want to see you, Jesus. I want to see you like I've never seen you before. I want to go deeper. I want to launch out in the deep. I want to encounter your majesty. I want to encounter, encounter your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Unveil my eyes. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. hand raised he never disappoints a true seeker he said if you seek me with all of your heart you will find me he said seek me while I may be found though I'm not far from each and every one of you he's near he's close my friend reach out by faith and touch him Touch the hem of his garment tonight. Get a new gaze of the Son of God. 
Jesus, we want to see you. We want to be with you, Lord. It's amazing the relationship Moses had with God. <laughs> Yet, his experiences encounter with God, hearing from God the way he did, did nothing but to provoke more hunger. See, when you see the Lord, it doesn't make you complacent. It doesn't make you go into cruise control. No friend. Moses said, teach me your ways so that I may know you. And then he prayed, show me your glory. Can anyone pray that prayer tonight with fear and trembling? Lord, show us your glory. The manifestation of Jesus and all of his beauty and all of his glory and all of his might. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you may, very reverently, if you could just grab your seat. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Samuel, I'm going to ask you to come on. Thank you, Lord. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, isn't this awesome so far? Listen, it's only going to get better from here. I'm telling you from what's, what's coming next, it's just, it's going to far exceed our, our greatest expectation. Amen? Amen. I want to share something real quick, and then we're going to roll a few announcements and, and, and uh, worship the Lord in giving. But before I do that, we were in pre-service prayer, and I saw such a clear picture that I wanted to release over, over this house. And uh, if you think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three uh, Hebrew, Hebrew boys that were in Babylon who would not bend or bow to the idol. You remember them? There's a few of us. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? They would not bow. They would not bend, bend to the idol. And the Bible says that they got thrown into the fiery furnace that was turned up. They turned up the heat. And in the back, I don't know, I just saw a very clear picture of those who were dancing in the fire. Because, and not only that, the, the scriptures, it was the first time that it was recorded that those three had a real genuine encounter with the Son of Man. What am I saying? I'm saying when you have a resolve to not compromise in your heart, though you may be found in the fire, the Son of Man will be there with you. Come on, there is an encounter. There is an encounter scheduled. It is in your future for those who make that resolve not to compromise in their heart. Come on. I don't know about you. I want a friend to dance with in the fire. I don't know if they were afraid or not, but they found a friend in the fire because of their resolve to not bend to an idol. Amen? Amen. Well, listen, this... I'm so excited about tonight. RSM, the Ramp School of Ministry, exists to develop, to activate, and to educate leaders for a global awakening. Listen, in other words, we want to resource what God is doing on a global scale by developing, educating, and activating uh, uh, um, uh, leaders into that, that global awakening. But listen. Before we go on, there's a few announcements and there's a few things that I want to share, and then we're going to receive the, uh, the offering tonight. Amen? Amen. If you would go ahead and roll this uh, announcement video. Hey, everybody, and welcome to The Ramp at OCI. I'm Taylor Ransom, and here are your announcements. If you missed the women's conference last week, first off, you missed out, but don't worry. We've got a short clip we're going to play you from last week's conference. Check it out. If I was living in a dead, dried up, to the bone city that didn't have any churches in it, that, 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 that knew the power of God and the power of revival, I would move. If that clip resonated with you, if you feel like God's speaking to you, go talk to William Alf in the lobby tonight after service. He might be able to help you find a house. 
Man, if you're looking for a powerful conference to go to, one is happening. It's called The King's Table, and it's coming to Dwelling Place April 29th through the 1st. It's going to inspire and equip you to be the prophet, priest, and king of your home. Go to judyjacobs.com for more information. If you haven't got one already, don't forget to pick up a calendar on your way out of service tonight. They are available in the lobby, and they have every event that's going to happen here for the next month. So if you want to keep up what's happening at the ramp here at OCI, pick one up on your way out. If you're not joining us for Youth Encounters on Friday nights, you are missing out. There's one happening this very Friday night at 6.30 p.m. in the small sanctuary. If you're a youth or young adult, come out. We're going to have some food, we're going to have some fun, and we're going to seek God together. Systematic study of the rapture is April 14th through the 15th with Dr. Brian Cutshaw. If you want to join us for these powerful lessons, you can join at ISO.org or you can join us in person at the TL Lowry Building. If you didn't know already, each week Perry Stone hosts the Global Prayer Center at the TL Lowry Building each Thursday night at 6 p.m. You can join us in person or you can watch on live on Perry Stone's YouTube channel. Either way, we'd love to have you pray with us. If you're interested in joining one of our amazing serve teams, we have a serve table in the lobby where you can become a part of one of our amazing teams like bookstore, cafe, greeters, nursery. It's all back there. Just go back there. Sign up today. Thank you so much for watching these announcements. Before I go, I wanted to say real quick, I don't know if you guys knew this, but it just so happens to be Miss Lauren Bentley's birthday today. So give her a round of applause. We're so honored and so thankful for the ministry that her and Pastor Samuel do at the ramp at OCI. Give her some love today on your way out, and I'll see you next week. Come on, that's awesome. Amen. Listen, again, I wanted to uh, reiterate something that uh, Taylor said. If you're a first-time guest or you're thinking about moving to Cleveland, Tennessee, you can see our friend William here on the front row. Amen? Amen. I don't know, and, and Brother Stone can testify to this, there are people all over this country and probably the countries of the world who are moving to Cleveland, Tennessee. As we met with multiple families saying, what, what, you know, and it was like, listen, sometime in 2020, God began to deal with our heart to move to Tennessee. And then he began to deal with our heart to move to this region. Then he began to uh, deal with our heart to connect with what's going on at, uh, here. So anyway, I'm like, all right. I mean, if God's leading you to come, come on. Amen. Amen. Well, I wanted to uh, say something real quick about the King's Table Conference at Dwelling Place. Um, uh, for They are giving a special discount to the people who are a part of the ramp. If you go to judyjacobs.com or jamietuttle.org, I believe, and you put in the word ramp, R-A-M-P in the discount uh, or the code thing, whatever, uh, they're going to give you 50% off of a registration, which is amazing. So anyways, I uh, highly encourage you to do that. Also, do y'all know, love Pastor Andrew Tao from Ramp Church Chattanooga? Yeah, I love it when he comes here and preaches the word and releases the word. He's got a conference this weekend, right? We got a, 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 a graphic up there about that one. Ramp Church Chattanooga, Pastor Andrew Tao, this weekend. So we want to uh, encourage you to go there as well. Amen? Yep, there it is. Woo! Collide. Amen? Amen. All right. Brother Stone, will you, will you join me on the platform, please? Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You love Perry Stone in this house? Man, my wife and I, we talk about this all the time. You know, there are people that you, that you esteem highly in the Lord, and then when you meet them, they disappoint you. That is not this man. The more I get to know him, the more I love him. The more I get to know him, the more I honor him. The more I get to know him, there is a thousand yeses that he's made behind closed doors that we will never know about. But we are living under the anointing and in the, the, uh, the sacrifice that he's made. Amen? Amen. I want him to share uh, his heart, uh, and, and then we're going to receive the offering. Okay. I will take a moment. Thank you, first of all, Samuel. It is... It's just a great evening. I want to welcome my friend from Jerusalem, Shweki. Many of you that have been with me to Israel know who Shweki is. I want to take a moment and talk about the Ramp School of Ministry. <clears throat> and I want to tell a story very quickly. I did not know this. I had no clue. Even though Rick is on my board, they, they've never asked me for anything, never. And uh, several years ago, they were having a ramp, winter ramp here. It was the first one I think that we had in this building with Karen. And if you'll remember, the Lord spoke to me over here and said, give her $400,000 from VOE 
And I didn't know why. I just know the Lord told me to do that. And after the service, Karen said that they had actually not paid a lot of their staff in weeks. It may have even been months that they were actually talking about what they were going to do when the ramp was over about even keeping the school open. They didn't even know how they were going to do it. And I don't know if I'm supposed to be sharing this with the whole ramp school or not. But, um, but God uh, allowed us to participate in a miracle for them. Without me knowing it, God spoke to my daughter to go to ramp school in that meeting. And we didn't know it till after the meeting was over with. And she's been there now two years. She'll graduate, but she's saying on, I think, another third year, the Lord willing. And uh, I want to say that there's a lot of schools you could send your young people to if they're called to ministry that I would not send my kids to. A lot of them. A lot of them who call themselves Christian universities. I would not do it. It's not worth tearing their faith down. And that's what they say. We've, we're going to tear your faith down. And if you have any faith left when it's over with, then God bless you. No, this school builds up kids to faith to where they know what they believe and why they believe it. And I want to uh, commend Ramp School and Karen and the sacrifice they've made. They have a new building that I, I, I believe they're going to be uh, moving into. Have you told them that yet? I hope I'm not saying things. I'm not, I don't know. I mean, Rick and I are very close. But, but anyway, yeah, is it? Do they know? Do you know? Okay, so I know that they're very excited about that. But I do want to mention one thing about my daughter, Amanda, how she has matured in the Lord in a wonderful way. And uh, I'm going to do something. The Lord really spoke to my spirit to do this. You know, we will have a summer warrior fest. And we opened up Warrior Fest registration. It's not on TV yet. And we just had, in 24 hours, 2,500 kids register in 24 hours. And so what we're going to do on Saturday night is Amanda Stone, my daughter, wherever she's hiding at, Amanda Stone, my daughter, and I are going to tag team preach at Warrior Fest for the first time. And... Uh, We've never done anything like this, but she has a call to preach, and we're excited about that. And for those of you that come to the normal Tuesday night service, it's very important for you to consistently and continually support the ministry that's going on here. It's going to get bigger. It's going to get greater. And the final thing I will sh share with you, where's Josh? He's in here somewhere. I can't see him. Yeah. Let me just mention this to you, that I will be closing on 160 acres with this house with a beautiful property, two lakes, okay? And the first thing we're having there, you don't know this yet, but I'm announcing it. <laughs> to, to Samuel and you both, the first thing I wanna have out there is a Friday night youth event right on that property, okay? So none of the kids have seen it. None of them know where it is. It's gonna be massive. It's gonna be huge. It's got a huge pool. Now, we're not gonna have a pool party, by the way, for all you sanctified folks out there, but uh, it does have a beautiful pool and a deck and, a, and just unbelievable. And that's the first thing that we will be having sometime. Maybe we can do it by May. And uh, I'm excited. Look at somebody and say, I'm excited to be alive right now to see what God is going to do. Come on, isn't that awesome? Come on, I praise God for all that he's doing here at the ramp. I'm, I'm just, I'm so floored and stirred. Amen? Amen. I used to share this all the time. One of my favorite passages in the book of Acts is out of Acts 19. It's when Paul goes to the city of Ephesus and he meets with a group of believers there and he says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? We didn't know there was a Holy Ghost. We only knew about the baptism of John. And then he says, boom, receive you the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I don't know if it sounded quite like that, but anyways, they received the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that they spoke in tongues and they begin to prophesy. But here, I want to pick up on the story real quick. Acts chapter 19, right? So he stays, Paul stays in Ephesus for just a few moments or a few weeks or a few months after that. Remember, there was 12 people that got filled with the Holy Ghost in Ephesus. And then Acts 19 verse 8, and it says, And he entered the synagogue, and he continued speaking out boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom. But when some were becoming hardened and disobedient, speaking evil of the way before the multitude, he withdrew from them and took away the disciples reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. Watch this. 
He withdrew from them, those 12 disciples. He reasoned daily in a school. And this took place for two years. Watch. So that all who lived in Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jew and Greek. Come on, do you feel like we're called to shape nations? You know the recipe in Acts 19 to shake nations? Get filled with the Holy Ghost and go to a two-year school of ministry. Then all in Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jew and Greek. Amen? Amen. We're going to receive an offering tonight, and everything that you give, it helps us do what we do, and that is reach people for Jesus. Not just reach them, but disciple them, to develop them, develop them spiritually, emotionally, you know, and, and uh, I was about to say physically, I meant Actually, I did, I did have a, a man's class when I was teaching there, and we, I took them to the track, made them run a mile, made them do push-ups, made them do sit-ups, made them do manly stuff. Amen? Amen. So, listen, I want you to just hear what God places upon your heart tonight and so into this ministry, so into the ministry of the ramp, all right? All right. Uh, um, Many different ways that you can do that. If you're making out a check, you can make it payable to the ramp. If you're giving by cash or credit card, there's an envelope there on the seat back in front of you. Or if you want to give by a mobile device of some kind, uh, you can text the word RAMP, C-L-E, that's R-A-M-P-C-L-E, to 77977. I believe, yeah, all those instructions on the screen. Amen? Amen. Would you stand all over this room, please? I want to bless you before... Uh, we continue with, with the, the remainder of the service, and I'm telling you, it's going to knock your spiritual socks off in Jesus' name. Father, thank you. Thank you for gathering us together. Thank you, Father, for your anointing, your spirit. I thank you that the Holy Spirit is not just so that we can have better services, but it is for power. Lord, I thank you that there is power, power, wonder working the power present here tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you for those that you have spoken to, to give into the offering. Lord, I declare blessings upon them. I thank you, Father, for every seed that is sown. I pray protection around that seed. Though it leaves your hand, it does not lead your life. I declare over you increase and favor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. And you can uh, go ahead and bring that offering to the front. Thank you, Lord. And thank you so much for your giving. Amen. Thank you very, very much for your giving. Hey, before we transition and I hand this back over to RSM, I did want to show you what happened in this room this past weekend. If you don't know, how many of you were here this past weekend for our women's ramp? Come on. Was it, man, there were a lot of you here. Thank you for coming. Was it not phenomenal, incredible, amazing, powerful? Just all kinds of really, really awesome stuff. Well, we have a small recap video. Listen, that's why this building, that's why God laid it upon Perry Stone's heart to build this building in the first place, was for a, 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 a place where people could come together and go after God with all of their heart. So we, want, we wanted to show you uh, what happened just this past weekend in this room. Amen? You can go ahead and, and roll that recap. What I sense in my spirit for this night, starting tonight, all the way through Saturday morning, this is no ordinary normal conference. I'm not just telling you that. This is no ordinary normal conference because these are not normal and ordinary days. On the first night, I want 
you to tell them I'm bringing them together and I want them to understand the war that they're dealing with and I want them to understand they've got to stand their ground and then God said to me Karen I've got to have you you've got to equip them with the right weapons they got to understand who they are and how to use their weapons right Lord, tell me, you got to make them to understand how vital they are to this hour. Because if you don't pray, who's going to pray? If you don't pray for your kids, who's going to pray for your children? Nobody can pray for them like you can pray for them. That's why I say this fought you so hard. That's why you fought hell. That's why it's been so difficult for you. in your faith. You got to say in the name of Jesus, I recognize who you are. You got to get out of my house. You got to get out of my child. You got to get out of my marriage. Get out of my kitchen. Get out of my bedroom. Get out. Go. In the name I come to you in the name of the Lord. Awesome. I don't know, that, that last part just reminded me. There was a moment in worship where David Binion, who was a worship leader, broke into the, uh, I don't know what it's called, but that Here Comes the Bride song. I had never felt much more like a bride in my whole life. It quickly wiped away, it quickly weared off, but listen, whatever. I heard somebody say, if I can be a bride, you can be a son. <laughs> Anyways, all right. That was a powerful moment. I'm sorry I spoil it. <laughs> Whatever. All right. But listen, are you ready? Come on. Are you ready to just go deeper? We have performing arts. We've got the RSM choir. We've got some people who are going to preach the word to us. It's going to be awesome. I want us to, again, just engage. Engage with what God is doing and with what, with what God is saying. Amen. Come on, Pastor Brian. 
Awesome. Can we give these singers, this band, a hand earlier for leading us into the presence of God? Thank you so much. So many of these singers and some of the band members that you saw are RSM students. And once again, you're going to see that throughout tonight from the speakers to the dances to the choir to all the pieces. And here, I'm telling you, you're going to be ministered to tonight. Now, the Bible tells us in Acts 2.17 that in the last days, what? God's going to do what? Pour out his spirit on what? All flesh and sons and daughters will prophesy. Sons and daughters will prophesy. Let me tell you something. That verse has taught me a thing or two as a 37-year-old man to say, God has something to say to me through a 20-year-old. God has something to say to me through a 16-year-old. God has something to say to me through a generation. You know, when Jesus raised the widow from Nain, she had a dead son. And the Bible says that Jesus' procession met her procession. And he speaks to this young man and he sits up. And the Bible says after he raises him from the dead, that the young man began to speak. Let me tell you something. When Jesus raises a dead generation to life again, they've got something to say. And they got something to say to you. So I've got two, I got a son and daughter right here that have something to say. So if you would, put your hands together. Let's welcome Zach Haynes, Amanda Stone. They're going to share and set up this song for our performing arts department. All right, well, first of all, I just want to give honor where honor is due to Pastor Sam and Miss Lauren. Thank you for having RSM here to really um, show Cleveland what... Uh, the ramp has invested into us. And also I want to give honor to Pastor Brian to, for giving us this opportunity to speak to you. So like Pastor Brian said, uh, I feel like, like me and Amanda both have this word. And my word, um, it, was, it was Easter weekend. I said, Lord, give me a revelation of the cross and what you did on the cross for me. And I'm like, well, you know, I already know what the Bible says, but I don't want head knowledge, I want heart knowledge. So we was down in St. Petersburg doing street ministry and there was one night we got zapped by the Holy Spirit, we were all out and the Lord began to show me what the, what the cross and what he did on it. So I went into this thing, I saw, I saw Jesus get down off his throne and the cross was laying there and I was, I was looking at the cross and he got down off his throne and he literally laid down on the cross and, he, and the nails were being drove into his hands and to his feet. And then when they lifted him up, he looked at me and he said, this is for you. And then at that moment when they pierced his side, blood started running down. It went down the cross. It pierced the ground and it went straight to hell and it destroyed hell. And I'm like, that's so powerful, Lord. Thank you for showing me that. And I thought that was it. But then... He took me back up to the cross where he was at and he got down off of it and he says, now I want you to do that. And I'm like, Whew. how am I supposed to, how am I, this was my mind, how am I supposed to nail myself on a cross? I only have two arms. I mean, but then he said, no, Zach, you're thinking too literal. He said, this generation, it's got so many things keeping them from revealing Jesus. And the things that I want you to nail on the cross are pride, envy, yourself, your, uh, your own, even your own gifts. I want you to nail those on the cross because if those get in the way, then people can't see me through you. And when people can't see me through you, then a generation will not be awake. So uh, I got to thinking, I'm like, okay, Lord, what is it you want me to nail up there? And again, he, sh he shared with me uh, pride, envy and all of that. But then he and then he took me, uh, Chosen does this drama, Worth It All. And he, he picked up my arm and he said, this means nothing if you don't die. Because you cannot die for the gospel if you cannot die to yourself. So again, that hit me. I'm like, Lord, I'm, I'm going to die. I'm just going to do it. I, I don't want anything in my life that can keep me from revealing you to this generation, to this nation. So that, that kept on going. Uh, I come out of that, I'm weeping. I'm like, Lord, let us get a fresh revelation of the cross and what you did for it. Lord, let us know our part. And I'm gonna leave you with this. It's not about you. 
It was never meant to be about you. It's about Jesus. And I got this, uh, the Lord dropped this example to me. So say um, <laughs> you have a bad day, you wake up late, you're running late to work, you're irritated, you're mad, you got to go get your Starbucks coffee, right? And then, you know, you go through that drive through you're all mad because <laughs> you woke up late, you're running late. But, you, but the thing is, you don't know that that 23-year-old girl about to hand you your coffee needs to see Jesus today. So with that, you need, and the Bible says, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. And he says to do that daily. So in that moment, when you wake up irritated, you have a choice. You're either going to be irritated or you're going to or you're going to put yourself up on, up, up on the cross. You're going to put yourself up on the cross because, again, it's not about you because there's a 23-year-old girl who's about to hand you your coffee who needs to see Jesus in you. She, she doesn't need to see you being all irritated because you woke up late. That's your fault. It's not about you. This generation needs to see Jesus. And they see, they see Jesus through you dying on the cross and getting yourself out of the way. Because when you get yourself out of the way, Jesus manifests through you. Yeah, I love what Zach said because I feel like it really is just an invitation for all of us to um, go deeper and to walk in the fullness of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And that's kind of something that um, I had a similar, not really similar encounter, but the Lord kind of spoke a very similar thing to me um, through a, m a moment I had with him a few weeks ago. And so I remember being a little girl and um, always hearing the analogy of like our hearts being compared to a home for the Lord. And that when we get saved, we ask the Lord into our hearts and our hearts become a home for Jesus. And so um, it's really simple, but I was, I've been reading a book by C.S. Lewis, and he talks about how when we invite the Lord into our hearts, we kind of expect him to come in and fix all the bad stuff. Like there's a crack in the ceiling, so you can fix that. Or the floors are a little creaky, so you can work on that over there. But then he comes in and he starts to kind of move things around that we like there. And we're like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I want you to touch that actually. Like, I kind of like that picture right there, so you can leave that. Um, or when he starts moving things around, we're just kind of like there's resistance in our heart. And so I was just sitting on my couch, and I was like, Lord, what does my heart look like? What does the house of my heart look like? And I immediately got this picture of a hallway, and all of the doors were closed. I was like, Lord, what is that? What does that mean? And I knew that the Lord was saying to me, Amanda, you've asked me into your heart and you've let me in, but there's still so many things that you don't trust me with. And there's still so many things that you're holding on to because they're comfortable for you and you like them where they are, but you haven't given me complete access. And it immediately reminded me of the verse in Revelation chapter 3, yes, 320, Revelation 320. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and him with me. And I feel, and it's really funny because that verse is written to, to the church. You know, it's not written to unsaved people, it's written to the church. So I feel like there is this invitation from the Lord saying, I'm not going to come in forcefully, but I'm knocking at the door of your heart. And at these doors that you've hidden from me or that you've kept me from coming into, it can be anything. It might not be the same thing that mine was, but it can be pride, like Zach said, or envy or places in your heart that aren't healed yet that you haven't given him access to because healing is hard, you know? So anything that's off limits to him, I feel like there's just this place where the Lord is like, I'm knocking at the door of your heart, but you have to let me in. You have to be willing to let me in. And it's really funny because the very next um, chapter four in Revelation is John's vision of the door and the voice saying, come up here. And I just can't help but wonder if like the reason that there was an open door in heaven for John is because he already had the revelation of Jesus, every door in my heart is open to you. You've knocked at the door of my heart and I've said yes to let you in. And then it was like the Lord was like, okay, John, here's a door and it's open. Come up here and see something that nobody's ever seen before. 
And I, I feel like that is even the invitation of, you know, we wonder like, well, why do I have to let him into these places? I don't really want to give him access. But there's an invitation for us to go deeper and to see something that we've never seen before. But for us to see something we've never seen before, it requires something out of us that we might not have done before. And so I just want to leave you with that, you know, that tonight um, even would be a night where you just say, Lord, is there anything off limits to you? And through this service, Lord, I give it to you because I want to see more of you. Um, and so at this time, I want to invite Performing Arts. And they're going to do a dance called Saved by Eddie James. And so I just pray that you guys would worship with them and enjoy.
Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, PA. Oh, I love to worship him in all the ways that we can, with our voices, with our dance, with worship, with, with all of it. He's worthy of all of it. I love those the, the words of that song, specifically where it says, saved, redeemed, delivered, and set free. That is all glory to Jesus because only he can do that. My name is Abigail Ward, and I'm a second-year student at the Ramp School of Ministry. And one of my second-year friends, Gina, and I have a word from you from, to you from the Holy Spirit. You know, he's the bread of life, and the Holy Spirit has been speaking to us, and so we simply want to share that fresh bread with you tonight and, and believe that it will change your life the way it's changed ours. So I just want to share a testimony of something that actually happened this past weekend at Women's Ramp. And I love that I'm able to come out and speak right after this song called Saved, because that is exactly what happened in my heart. A huge moment of freedom and deliverance that only Jesus could do. I have never been in a place the past several months that I have loved Jesus more he has been everything. He's captured my gaze. He's captured my attention. And I have never felt more in love with him. I've never felt like I've seen his face more clearly or been so captivated by him. And just whenever you see Jesus in that way, like Pastor Brian has said tonight, it leaves you wanting more. You just, you don't want to stop there. You want more of him. But how many know whenever the devil sees something like that, hunger like that, he's not going to just leave it and let you pursue Jesus unhindered because that would totally defeat his plan and his purpose for your life. So <laughs> with this hunger, I can see clearly how in the past several months, the enemy has come in and planted lies in my mind. And when the enemy plants lies, he doesn't come in with an outlandish lie that it would be ridiculous for you to believe, right? He doesn't, he doesn't say something to you that it's easy to disbelieve. What the enemy does is he takes the truth and he twists it so that the lie that you're believing still has an element of truth in it. And that's the perverted thing about it. So with the hunger that I'm giving Jesus these in this season of of my life. I'm like, Jesus, I just want to give up more of me so that I can have more of you. How can I decrease so that you can increase in my life? Whatever you want me to pour out, whatever you want of me to be less so that you can be more. I want to do that, Jesus. Well, the enemy comes in and takes that and immediately uses it against me and starts saying, Abigail, your pursuit of Jesus is absolutely pathetic. You are not reading your word enough. You are not fasting enough. You're not praying enough. You think Jesus is pleased with this love that you have for him? Are you kidding? It's so pitiful. You're, you think you're something spiritual. You think you're spiritual minded. No, you're so carnal and self-focused and selfish and, and carnally minded. It's ridiculous. And the reason that you can't hear his voice and the reason that you feel so far from him is because he's so displeased with you. So just keep trying your best. And that is so condemning and that is, leaves no hope and that is not the voice of Jesus. So coming out of, I can like standing here right now, I can see that that is not the voice of Jesus. But when you're underneath those lies, it's very hard to tell whose voice you're hearing. In the moment, discernment is clouded. You can't tell whose voice you're hearing a lot of times until you pray through and get out of that because it is so, there's so much of a fog that clouds your discernment, your, your ear to hear. And like I said, with the enemy twisting that voice of truth, it was like, I knew I could give more. So Jesus, is it your voice in my hearing? Are you truly just so displeased with me? So this past weekend at Women's Ramp, it was just a moment of worship where I'm looking up at Jesus and I'm like, Jesus, I don't know all of these voices that are going on in my head. I, I don't know about all the swirling confusion. I don't know all the answers, but I do know that I love you. And I do know that you're all I want. And I do know that you're the only one for me. And I do know that I want to be near you no matter what. 
and I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit more clearly than I had heard in months. He said, Abigail, remember who I am. Remember that I was, Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit and he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil because God was with him. It was like Jesus was saying, I went about doing good, Abigail. Remember that. I did not put this on you. Has the, has the condemnation and this hopeless feeling been good for you? No, then it hasn't been from me. That has not been my voice. I came to do good. I came to do good. I am your life giver. I do not bring death and condemnation and hopelessness. And it was like a ray of light penetrated through that dark cloud. And it was like I was coming up for a breath of air. I was like, Jesus, yes, say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Because the truth of his voice drowns out the lies. The truth of his voice will destroy every lie in your life. And if for no other reason, I'm here to tell you that tonight, that the truth of the word of Jesus will destroy every lie that the enemy is speaking to you. And Jesus went on and he said, Abigail, I am your husband. You are my bride. And I do not, that is not my character. And if, think, imagine a, um, a natural human marriage. It's like you have been allowing the voice of another man to come in and tell you the character of your husband. It's like you've been listening to another natural man tell you what your husband is like instead of listening to the voice of your husband affirm his own character to you. Abigail, open your ears and let me tell you who I am. Listen to the voice of your husband telling you who he truly is because that is the true voice you can follow. And it was such life unto me. It was so much life and only Jesus can do that. He saves. He brings freedom. He brings deliverance. And he's the only one who can. He is the only one who can. And I just, I give all the thanks and all the praise to Jesus. He brings freedom and he brings life. And my life is not the same because of it. So I just, I release that over this room. Father, I pray that if any, if where there are lies and where there is a dark cloud of confusion, where there's a difficulty to discern the voice of Jesus and the voice of the enemy, I pray that you would open the ears of our understanding. I pray that you would open the eyes of our understanding, that we would be able to hear your voice clearly. Hear what you are saying and affirming about yourself. Thank you, Jesus, that your word destroys the lies of the enemy. Thank you that your light destroys the darkness. Thank you that your life destroys death and that you bring life for us. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to give it over to my friend Gina right now. So good. So good. Well, as Abigail was talking, she was talking about the true character of God, and God is good, amen? And so we say that, but do we really believe it? And so the other day in prayer, the Lord was asking me, do you know what my name is? And I'm like, which name? God, Jehovah, Jehovah you know. He said, faithful. Not many people know me by my name, faithful. And I'm thinking, Lord, what, what does it mean that you are faithful? Like, is that even biblical? Is that your name? And, and I recall in Revelation how there was a rider on a horse whose name was faithful and whose name was true. And so he's saying faithful means that I keep my covenant. When somebody is unfaithful, they are not keeping their covenant. Their word is not being kept. But he's saying, I am keeping my covenant. And I'm like, Lord, why do you want me to know? Why do you want them to know that your name is faithful? And he just says, because they don't. And so today, I want to challenge you guys. Do you know that he keeps his word? That even when you're not consistent, he's consistent. That his faithfulness is not held in the parameters of your circumstances, but in who he is, who his character is. And so I was living this out in my own life because I really, uh, at the end of our second year, we have an Israel trip that we get to go on. And my heart has always been for Israel. And I'm like, Lord, even if I have to pay, even if I have to get a loan out for Israel, I'm going. I want to go. I'm going. And he says, you don't have to pay. He told me, you don't have to pay because if you delight yourself in the Lord, I will give you the desires of your heart. So the reason I wanted to go to Israel in the first place is because he's the desire of my heart. So he said, you're going debt free. And I said, okay, I'll believe it. 
you know, when I see it, I'll really believe it, but I'll choose to believe it. And so um, we go to Ohio and have a conference every year. And in Ohio, we had a conference, and I was going out to, to dinner, and the Lord was just speaking to me the whole time. But I looked down at my phone, and somebody put their whole stimulus check towards my Israel trip and paid it off. <laughs> Anonymously, didn't even tell me. I'm like, no. I know who that was. That's the one who's faithful and the one who's true and the one who stays consistent. So I just want to release that to you guys today. Your circumstances don't define his faithfulness, okay? If you're believing, if you have promises, he's a man of his word. Did he not keep his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Did he not keep his covenant with David? Did he not keep his covenant with us when Jesus blessed us? He's a man of his word and he will keep his covenant. And so I want to release that. Whatever promises, whatever finances you're believing for, he is a man who is faithful and true. And so just in that, when he says he came, he came to set, at, set those free, set at liberty those who are oppressed. And he is faithful. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? So today we're just proclaiming, Lord, we believe you. We believe your word. We know that you are consistent even when we don't feel it, Lord. And so we thank you, Lord, for who you are in your character. And so today, as we're just, you know, really pondering on his consistency and his faithfulness and how he set us free, indeed, without question, that's what indeed means, without question, by the way, um, we're going to have worship our choir go ahead and minister freedom because it is an absolute because he said it. And so today, when we're ministering freedom, I just want to give a little shout out. This was written by one of our RSM alum, and you guys know him as Sergio. <laughs> But we know him as Isaac Hammond Tree, so let's give it up for Isaac. And you guys just receive this word and receive freedom.
you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, can you put your hands together and thank this choir, this RSM choir. Incredible. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Let me tell you something. These are anointed young men and women of God. They come in to the Ram School of Ministry, and many of them come, you know, just freshly saved, right out of high school, all of these different places in their walks with God. And we also get the young and the old. It doesn't matter. The people that feel the draw of God, we see them come, and they come, and we watch God absolutely turn their lives upside down as not only are they awakened, but now they are equipped and then sent out to transform the world. You know, Jesus is the most captivating figure and person and being in God that we worship. We need a fresh revelation of him every day of our lives. And that's what we were talking about in worship. So I love this next song that we're going to do by Eddie James. It's simply titled, Jesus. And we get to captivate ourselves again from the word of God of what Jesus is like. And so once again, let's put our hands together and welcome the performing arts as they minister this song.
Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. Let's give these performing arts RSM students another hand. Come on. Amazing. Amazing. I am in love with that dance. I'm in love with that song. I'm telling you, so magnificent. Well, we want to do one more thing tonight. And uh, Josh, you, uh, Walter, you can go ahead and bring out that pulpit. But before she comes to speak, we're going to have a young lady speak from the Ramp School of Ministry Department and uh, to share her heart tonight. Before she does, I want to share a little bit more about the Ramp School of Ministry and an opportunity for those that might be interested to be a part of our school. You know, we have so many, since we've been doing this since 2010, you're talking about 11 years of investing into a generation. I was privileged and honored to be a part of that first class and investing into them, teaching in our core curriculum and watching this thing develop for 11 years and watching so many young people come not only to get awakened, but get equipped and then sent out to fulfill their God-given destiny. I love what Pastor Sam was saying earlier, that our desire, our heart is to raise up leaders of a global awakening. You know, let me tell you something, God is doing something all over the earth. Amen. He's moving here in Cleveland, but he is moving in Pakistan. He is moving in Iran. He is moving in Africa. He is moving in South America. God is moving all over the world. And if God is moving, then God needs leaders. He needs someone to preach the gospel. He needs someone to do the ministry to the children. He needs someone to lead worship. God is in need of laborers. That's what Jesus said, right? Jesus is saying, hey, the harvest is plentiful. He's saying, there are so many people ready to get saved, but I've got a problem. The laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to raise up and send forth laborers. And that's exactly why RSM exists. And it's what you've seen tonight. It's just a little taste of what we do within the school of ministry. We call those SMTs. Everybody say SMT. This is our version of major specialized ministry training. We do that through worship. We do that through the performing arts. We do that through platform ministry, which is our speaking. And we do that through missions where we equip people to not only go overseas, but also reach their local neighborhoods and different things like that. We've got incredible directors that have been working right here even tonight. Matt and Emma back over our worship department. Let's give them a hand and honor them. Taya Malone, she's probably somewhere with the Performing Arts Department. I lead the platform ministry and Julie and Brett Rayner, incredible, incredible missionaries who have heart for missions, leading our missions department right there in Hamilton, Alabama. And God is doing incredible things. Is Richard Wilson in the house tonight? Wave at me, Richard. Stand up for me, Richard Wilson. Richard Wilson is our recruiting director, an amazing man of God burning for Jesus every day of his life. But we have a booth right out here in the foyer, right outside of these doors. So if you're interested to say, hey, you know what? I want to go deeper. I want to get my foundation secured. I want to get my purpose even more fueled up and be equipped for what God has called me to do. If you feel the pulling and the tugging for the Ram School of Ministry, we would love to answer your questions. We would love to put information in your hand in order to answer your questions, in order to whatever that might be, but lead you towards that God-given path that he has for you. And if that's RSM, we would love to see you this coming August or soon in the future. So at this time, I'm excited to introduce Heaven Carr. She's had her hand in many of our SMT departments. But let me tell you something. This young lady has a gift. This young lady has an anointing. She has been through some pain and heartache. And not only has she been through pain and heartache, but she has been healed. She has been made whole. And you hear it when she speaks. She has a word of faith for us tonight. So you can remain seated. But if you would, put your hands together and welcome this young lady, a second-year student at the Ramp School of Ministry, Miss Heaven Carr.
You know, I know that we came here to hear RSM, okay? I know we came here for a show, but can we just act like God has stepped off the throne and came into this room to speak to us tonight? Can we get out of our seats for just a second and know that God, the God that delivered you from the situation, the God that kept your marriage when it was on the rocks, can we just act like God is in the room today? See, I believe when we were praying, I believe that we were praying through for some people who were walking through situations. And God said, I'm going to come on April 13th, 2021 and step down and step in the OCI room to meet some needs today. So I just want to know if there are some people in this room that came in here with some needs because God is here. God is in the room today. So God, I thank you. I thank you that you are here. I thank you that you are the Alpha and the Omega God. I thank you that you are El Shaddai, that you are Yahweh. God, we claim you to be the only God we serve this morning or this evening. I thank you, God, and I pray that every word that comes out of my mouth is not from me, but that it will be living manna that meets every need, spoken and unspoken in this room. And God, I ask that you would even just bless our leaders the leaders that paved the way for us to be here. And especially bless Miss Karen, because without her, we wouldn't be here. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So today, um, I'm going to be coming out of Judges 13. And I felt so strongly that the Lord began to just start speaking about some situations. You know, because sometimes we can come into church and we can put on a church face and we can be like, okay, I'm here, I showed up, I paid my tithes. But when we go home, there are some situations that we don't even speak about. But God says, I'm coming today with a sword. I'm coming today with a word for you. So if you have your Bibles, please turn to Judges 13. Can I get some water? Um, turn to Judges 13. And I'm going to pick up at verse 2. <clears throat> and it says, there was a man, a certain man from Zorah, from the family of Dan, whose name was Manoah. Thank you so much. <laughs> his wife, his wife was unable to conceive and had no children. The angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, it is true that you are unable to conceive and have no children, but you will conceive and give birth to a son. Now, please be careful not to drink wine or beer or to eat anything unclean, for indeed, you will conceive and give birth to a son. You must never cut his hair because the boy will be a Nazarite to God from birth, and he will begin to save Israel from the power of the Philistines. Then the woman went and told her husband, a man from God came to me. He looked like the awe-inspiring angel of God. I didn't ask him where he came from, and he didn't tell me his name. See, what I love about this story, if you look at verse 2, it says that this man and a woman in covenant, they were barren, so they couldn't have no children. And just like them, some of us in this room may be barren. Some of us in this room may be facing situations, may be facing a reality. And what God began to reveal is that their reality is not their identity. Their reality has to submit to the word of God. And so I, when, I, when I wrote this word, it was a season where some things were just looking, where my reality was just crazy. See, I was going through some financial things and I couldn't find the money to stay in the ministry school. I started going through things with my family and I was believing God that he would heal my family from some things. I started believing God that me and my father would be reconciled. I started believing God that my father would be saved, that my mother would be saved. And I started to claim some promises that said, as for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. That not if only that I would believe, but that my entire household would be saved. See, I started claiming some promises because God gave me a sword and he gave me a word. And what God began to reveal is that in the Bible, in this story, this family was looking at barrenness. But what I love in verse 3, where it says, it is true that you weren't able to conceive, which told me, heaven, God is so mindful of your situation. He is so present in your situation. So it's true right now that you're facing some financial hardships, right? 
It's true right now that your marriage may be on the rocks, right? It's true right now that you're believing for a prodigal to come home, right? It's true right now that you're believing for a parent to come back to God, right? This, all of this is true because God is mindful of your reality. But what I love is that, but you will. And that right there, when I was just in a low moment, God said, but you're going to get up from this heaven. You're going to get up from this heaven. You're going to get through this heaven. You're going to come through this on the other side, and you won't even smell like what you went through. You won't even look like what you went through. And I came to prophesy over some people today that says if you're in a situation, you're going to come out on the other side. You're not even going to smell like what you went through. You're not even going to look like what you went through. Why? Because we have a word from God. And see, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So when Pastor Sam begins to release a word about the three Hebrew boys, what you don't know is that the Lord gave me this word earlier, but I didn't know where it fit. And what I began to understand is that these boys walked through a fire that was so seven times hotter than what it should have been. And then they began, I began to read where it said that they came through untied and unbound. And I believe that the God, that God is saying that some of you are going to come, not some of you, but all of you are going to come through situations untied and unbound. And you're going to be walking through the fire where Jesus is standing right next to you. And that the one who put you in the fire, that the one who brought the trouble on your house, he's going to look and say, oh, there is a God. There is a God. So I began to just wrestle with this word for months and months. And I began to understand why Manoah's wife began to believe the promise of God. See, when you have a sword, the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith, I don't care what situation is coming at you, God has the final say. God has the final say, regardless of how hot the fire will be, there was a promise that I'm coming out not even smelling like what I went through. And seeing in Genesis 1:22, it tells us that we were created to be fruitful and to multiply. So for every woman that is facing a barren situation in this room, I speak to your woman, say you will be fruitful and you will multiply in Jesus' name. Oh, God. You see, we even thinking about the prodigals. See, those of us that are believing in the because you have to understand something. There was a promise that God gave that he said, not only if you believe, but your entire household would believe. So that means for those of you that are believing for some kids to come home, if you just believe in God and you believe in who he is, is he not faithful to deliver your family just like he delivered the Hebrews out of Egypt? Is he not faithful? See, there were some promises in the word. And we have to understand that sometimes our reality may not line up with the word. But I'm telling you today that because God is who he said he is, because he is the Alpha and the Omega, he is inside and outside of time. And so when he speaks a thing and sends a promise, you can hold on to it. And then your reality will align with his word because he knows no time. Oh, for the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, I don't know if you came in here and just trying to get through on a Tuesday night and check off a church service list, but God has stepped up and said, no, I'm going to speak to some things tonight. I'm going to speak to some situations tonight. And I believe so much. I had a vision in worship that he was standing here holding a sword and holding a shield and say, if you would just pick it up, things would change. You see what he told but he began to tell Mary and Martha when Lazarus was dead. And he looked at him and said, didn't I tell you that if you would just believe, you would see the glory of God? Yeah. See, God gave Manoah's wife permission to believe. And I feel like today he's given some people permission to believe. I don't care if you were believing and it didn't happen the first time. Believe again. Yeah. So we look at verse 4 and 5. And it said, now... Please be careful not to drink wine or beer or eat anything unclean. For indeed, you will conceive and give birth to a son. You must never cut his hair because the boy will be a Nazarite to God from birth. And he will begin to save the Israel from Philistines. And God began to reveal, he said, heaven, you have to steward the word that I gave you. Because sooner or later, you're going to need it. 
So what does that mean? When God begins to release a word from platforms and in church services, it's not enough for me to just write it down and, you know, give a shout here and there. It has to be in my heart. And I believe so much that we are in a time now more than ever where the word has to be written on our hearts. The word has to be written on our hearts. You see, when, when the three Hebrew boys were standing in that time where Daniel was, and King Nebuchadnezzar said, when I make some ruckus, basically, he said, when I get ready to bang all these instruments, I want y'all to bow. But see, I believe that the three Hebrew boys had it written on their heart. That says, I don't care what noise you make. I don't care how hot you turn the fire up. I'm not bowing to you. And I believe that God is instilling that in some people today, that you would have something in your heart that says, I don't care how hot it gets. I don't care what situation I got to walk through. I don't care if I don't even see my family come back to God while I'm living. I'm still not bowing. And I just believe in this room. I believe so much in this room that God is just giving people permission to believe again. And that they be stepping down and saying, just believe because the story is already written. The victory is already won if you would just believe. You see, COVID came and put the nation in just, just this, this, this thing where everybody just, you know, well, God, I lost my job and I can't work and I can't feed my family. Is he not faithful to provide? You know, COVID came and it said, oh, everybody got to put on a mask and don't touch anybody or I might get it. Is he not the one that said that you were not born to carry sickness and disease, but you were born to heal it? Yes. See, there's, there's this thing that happens when you begin to fight with the word of God. And what I began to learn during my time at two years of ministry school was that if I don't have anything else, I got the word. If I don't do anything else for God, I just know in the word that, that I'm in the will. This is his will. And see, it's that understanding that you begin to learn that God, see, that's going to be a day when I stand and I have to give an account for what I did here. And I'm not going to stand before political parties. I'm not going to stand before racial groups. Come on, come on. I'm not going to stand before a virus. But I'm going to stand before God. Yeah. And it changes your perspective. Yeah. Oh. <coughs> oh. So, when I look at verse 6, and the man can come up, when I look at verse 6, it says, Then the woman went and told her husband, a man of God came to me and he looked like an awe inspiring angel of God. And I didn't ask him where he came from and he didn't tell me his name. And what I love about the story is that she has something in her heart that when God spoke, she just believed. See, when I was 11, my innocence was taken from me. And it put me in a place where I was just bound. I was gripped by fear and I, I couldn't lift my head and look at people. I, I couldn't look in a mirror. I couldn't, I would just, just beat myself down because I was like, God, I'm damaged goods and you can't heal something like this. You can't heal me. And I started to get myself away to me and before it was even time. And I began to hang out with people I had no business hanging out with. <laughs> And I began to do things that I had no business doing because I was so hurt and I was so broken. And I remember one day in my college dorm room, I was on the floor and I sat up on my bed and I began to look out the window and I said, today's going to be the day. I said, God, you, you can't use me. Like I, I, I don't have anything left. And I said, today's going to be the day because I'm so, I'm so tired of being fearful. I'm so I'm so tired of dealing with this. I'm so tired of being, just dealing with these images of memories of what happened to me. I'm just tired. And I remember getting on my knees and I was like, God, please just let me kill myself. Let me just do it. Let me, let me take my life, please. But God stepped in in that moment and he became a comfort of peace. And I'm telling you, since that day, I've never been the same. 
And little did I know that God would send me to Hamilton, Alabama, and he would give me a gift to preach. And I didn't know that I had it, but it was just a yes to God because I knew the man that I had met. And then when I was in Hamilton, my first year, God said, I'm going to give you a sword. See, what we don't realize is that the, the havoc that the enemy tries to bring to us, God will turn that thing around and he will use it as a very sword in your hand. And see, when the enemy came to me and began to just grip me with fear, God said, I did not give you the spirit of fear. See, when we got here, this thing of fear and intimidation tried to control me. And I didn't know what I was going to say. But God said, heaven, what have I called you to do? He said, heaven, did I give you the spirit of fear? Or did I give you a sword? Did I give you disbelief or did I give you a shield? And I feel like today God is giving somebody some armor today. And it's not the armor that you've been seeing up here. It's your own armor, just like David. See, you can't walk in Saul's armor when you're facing your reality. You need to walk in your own. And so I just believe in this moment that God is here and he wants to change some realities today. So you don't have to keep accepting what you've been accepting. See, if your marriage is in trouble, I know a God who can restore. If you're believing for some family members, I know a God who can bring a father back after three years and say, I want to meet with you. See, that's the thing about God when he gives you a sword. And it's not for you to accept the will of the enemy. See, what you have to understand is you were born to have strife with the enemy. You were born to step on his head, even though he may bruise your heel. See, what I realized about my story is that the enemy bruised my heel a little bit. He bruised my side. But that's okay because God delivered me from it. And I don't even look like what I've been through. And he gave me the confidence to stand before you and tell you that you have a shield and a sword with your name on it. And it's your name. It's not anybody else's name. So if you've been accepting some things as your reality and you haven't been aligning that thing with the word, I'm here to tell you that God is wanting to meet with you today. See, this is a divine appointment because he's telling you that he wants to meet with you to give you some armor to stand up and fight with the word. So if that's you, I want you to come to this altar and I'm gonna pray. And we're just gonna let the Holy Ghost do what he does best. So God, I thank you that you are a healer. I thank you that every brokenness in this room you're meeting. I thank you that every financial need in this room that you are faithful to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask for. I thank you, God. I thank you, Father, that even if we put down the armor, you're faithful for us to pick it up again. I thank you, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you that you're even breaking off comparison in this room. I thank you that even in the story of David and Saul, see, David couldn't pick up Saul's armor because he knew it was some armor with his name on it. God, I thank you that you're calling somebody's name today. Oh, God, I thank you. I thank you that you're restoring families today. I thank you. I thank you that you're restoring families today, that you're bringing some fathers home you're bringing some mothers back. I thank you that you're bringing some sons and daughters back that have walked away. I thank you that you're restoring faith in this room today. I thank you that you're restoring faith in this room. God, we choose to believe this morning. We choose to believe today, God. We choose to believe regardless of our situation. God, we know that you have the final say. We know that you have the final say, God. Come on, the word of the Lord has been delivered. Let's stand to our feet all across this room. Tonight, if you need to take up a sword, if you need to take up a shield, tonight if you're going through a battle and you're sick of being beat around and pushed around, come on, God has a word for you. God has a sword for you. God has a shield for you. Come on, there's a word of faith that's being released. Those at this altar, begin to pray. Begin to lift your hands. Come on, right now begin to contend. Begin to cry out to God. 
Come on, let's begin to worship right now all across this room and let God minister. students here right now that have been bathed in prayer for two years if you need prayer about anything if there's a need in your life if you just simply want agreement if there's something in your heart that you are believing God for come on there was testimonies throughout all tonight of truths that set people free of financial blessings whatever that might be for family restoration heaven was talking about even her own father she not talked for three years but was praying for restoration she just got done with the 
meeting with him in Atlanta for three hours long to be restored to her father. Come on, God can do anything tonight. If you need prayer, I want you to step out. RSM, if you'd come. If you're not praying with someone already, kind of line up here and kind of look for people as they come. But come on, we're going to go back into this song. We're going to believe for miracles tonight. If everybody would, let's lift their hands all across this room. But if you need to make your way up, I want you to begin to come now. Come on, we're going to pray for you right now. We give the ministry to you. You tell me he can do it, and I see cancer disappear, and I see metal plates dissolve. Don't you tell me he can do it, don't you tell me he can do it, and I see real life resurrection, I see mental health dissolve. Don't you tell me he can do it, don't you tell me.
miracles are happening. Pastor Samuel just said that someone's eyes were just healed right here at this altar without anyone praying for them. Their eyes were completely healed. One of the young girls from RSM came up to me and I was already feeling this, but something with barren wombs, something about difficulty in getting pregnant. We just had a young girl, Bianca, where you at? Bianca just went in, said she had endometriosis. Said, we're going to have to do a full hysterectomy because she was in so much pain. She got that report and was so downtrodden, just so heavy. She ended up coming back to the Ramp School of Ministry. I don't know if she even told anyone. Did you tell anyone? Bianca didn't tell anyone. Walks into a morning prayer meeting. 
And what happens? The word of knowledge comes forth. There's someone here who just got a report that you're not going to be able to get pregnant. The Spirit of the Lord touches her body. She receives the miracle. She goes back to the doctor. They begin to do the ultrasound stuff and cannot find anything that they found before because Jesus is a restorer. Ashley and Gentry Brown, y'all still here? They're, they had to slip out. Ashley and Gentry Brown just sitting on the front row there. Several miscarriages. She had some kind of disease, some kind of problem within her body that every time she got pregnant, her body attacked that egg, attacked that seed. They began to get a word of knowledge, began to stand on the word of God. They took out their sword. They took out their shield, stood on the word of God. Now they got a handful of baby boys. How many babies y'all got now? Two. Two and more to come in Jesus' name. I don't care what you need tonight. He supplies all of our need according to his what? Riches and glory. There's glory here, friend. And whatever you need, he wants to give it to you tonight. Heaven, are you able to come? She's out and about right now. She's in a third heaven right now. We want to pray for those watching online. We want to pray for you in this room. If you have a need right now, I want you just to lift your hand to the Lord right now. If you have a need that only the power of God, and I know a lot of y'all are lying. We're going to cast out a lying spirit. I, I got my needs. How many need a miracle from God? Prodigal, son or daughter, maybe a brother, maybe a sister, maybe a mom or dad. Maybe you need a financial miracle. Maybe there's a healing that you need in your body. Maybe you want to stand in the gap tonight. God is wanting to do something for you. If you're watching online, maybe you're watching this via archive, Facebook, however that might be. God wants to minister to you. You're not just watching this to kill time or, or just be on YouTube. No, you have come here for such a moment as this because God had a word for you. And he wants you to take up your sword. He wants you to take up your shield because God is going to touch your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, you see these hands. My hand goes up as well, God. You know every need, you know everything that is in our lives. Lord, we come to you tonight knowing that you are the God of miracles. You are the God of the impossible. You are the God who takes broken things and makes them whole again. You are the God of families. And you have come to not only rescue us, but you said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only will you be saved, but your household will be saved. You're the God who heals the sick and the feeble. That when they came out of Egypt, there was not one sick or feeble among them. You healed three million people. You're the God who raises the dead. You're the God who does miracles. You're the God who does the impossible. So God, we ask in faith tonight that you would release miracles, signs, and wonders. Release it in this room. Release it in each and every life. Release it in each and every household. Release it by way of airways as they're watching online. Come do miracles. Bring glory to your son, Jesus. Come on one more time. Throw those hands up and declare you are a miracle worker. That is who you are.
this room right now, every eye on Jesus tonight. The Holy Spirit just whispered in my heart that there's someone here, there's someone watching online, and you're not where you need to be with God tonight. You know that tonight, where you're singing this song, you're going through the motions, but you know there's been compromise in your life. You know that the commitment that you've made to Jesus years ago, that you've not followed him the way you should. Tonight, through a simple act of repentance and faith in Christ, you can be in the right alignment with the Father again. He's not mad at you. He's not angry at you. No, he's madly in love with you. And tonight he wants to reconcile you to himself through his son, Jesus Christ. With every hand raised, I want everyone to pray this prayer tonight. We're going to pray a prayer of dedication to Jesus. Whether it's for a first time or whether for you are rededicating your life tonight, let's set things right with the Lord Jesus Christ because he loves you and he longs to walk with you. Everyone say, dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sin. I turn from my sin, and I turn to you tonight. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead, and I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my very best friend. Lord, I repent for every side issue, for every compromise, and I choose tonight to follow you alone. You are the one true God of my life. And from this moment on, I will follow only you in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody give God, God praise right now. Come on, somebody pass from darkness to light. Come on, somebody pass from darkness to light. Somebody tonight has gotten their heart right with Jesus, and we're going to celebrate with the angels of heaven over one sinner that has been brought to repentance. God, we thank you tonight for the blood of Jesus that has washed away our sin. We thank you tonight for relationship with you, Jesus. Waymaker. you are faithful. We believe that you are a way maker. We believe that you're a miracle worker. We believe you are a promise keeper. Lord, we believe everything that you've ever said, no matter what it looks like, no matter what we're going home to, no matter what our bank accounts and lives might declare to us, we know that your word has the final say. Tonight, we choose to take up our sword. We choose to take up our shield. We choose to stand on the word of the living God, knowing that you are faithful and you are true. We receive all that you have for us tonight in the name of Jesus. And all God's people shouted, amen, amen, amen. Pastor Samuel. Come on, is this not awesome? Lord, have mercy. Listen, I realize what time it is. Thank you so much for just staying with us. You know, I, I want to just say a few things, um, and then I'm going to speak to RSM real quick. But let me say this. There are many of these RSM students who believe for, uh, for f finances, for meals, for tuition, for trips, for whatever. If, if God highlighted someone to you specifically, do not be afraid or think, you know, like, I probably shouldn't do that. No, if God spoke to you to give one of these students something individually, a gift, a financial gift, do it. 
Like I said, they, they are here in faith, many of them here in faith. Many of them don't have families that support them or churches that support them. And if God has highlighted someone to you, give them a gift. Amen? Amen. Now, RSM, holy moly. <laughs> holy guacamole. I'm so proud of you. Like, I am so proud of you. It was amazing. The ministry time was amazing. Performing arts, the choir, the speaking. Heaven? If you knew her, she's super soft and tender and soft-spoken. And she got up here, and I was like, I was blown away with the roar that came out of your spirit. The anointing was so strong. I was just, I was like, I could sit here for hours and drink of the anointing of God. It was powerful. I believe in you. I believe in the call of God on your life. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm so stirred. God raise you up as a voice that will lead multitudes and multitudes and multitudes. Come on, there, there are gifts and surprises in the very, very near future that there are doors and opportunities that are going to open up for you. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the, the, uh, the, this Isaiah 66, to this one will I look. He that is broken and of a contrite heart and who trembles at my word. Lord, I thank you that you have caught, that she has caught your attention. And now you, just like Jeremiah, it says that you have put my word in your mouth and you're going to say what I tell you to say and you're gonna go where I tell you to go. I declare blessings over heaven in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you that the seal of the Holy Spirit surrounds her, keeps her, protects her, and drives her forward in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for RSM. Thank you for the, the, the students that came here. Lord, I pray that the anointing increases over their life. The word of God that you've placed on the inside of them, it only increases. I thank you that you have found a generation of people who will dance with you in the fire because they have refused to compromise. They refuse to bow to the idol in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for that. I bless you. I bless you, I bless you. I'm so, so unbelievably, incredibly proud of each and every one of you. I love you. Amen. Amen. And for our, our ramp here in Cleveland family, thank you so much for coming and just staying with us. Come on, just uh, um, remember that we'll be back here next Tuesday. Lord willing, I'm going to bring a word that I'm feeling in my heart. Lord willing, you never know around, you never know around here. Amen. But Lord willing, Lord willing, I'm going to be bringing a word. But I love you. I bless you. And I will see you again next Tuesday. Amen. All right. See ya. booth out front. So if you're interested in, in or if God's spoken to you something, go visit our booth and talk to some of our people. Amen.